Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to go through 2.6, Retrieving Memories for AP Psychology. So remember, if you really like the videos, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot, and I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions about any of the units that we're talking about, please leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Okay, let's go to the CED questions. So the CED question for 2.6 is explain how memory retrieval processes get information out of memory. So we're going to go through the essential information that the, the College Board puts into the CED so we know what to study for the exam. Okay, let's start. These are the key terms for this particular unit. I'm going to do a separate video on the key terms, definitions, and real-life examples to help you learn these words the better, okay? Let's start with introduction to memory retrieval. So memory retrieval is the process of accessing and bringing stored information back into our conscious awareness, okay? Now we're gonna look at recall versus recognition. So recall basically is retrieving information from memory without explicit cues. So for example, like these fill in the blank tests or essays where cues are very minimal, that would be recall. Then we have recognition. Rec recognition is basically described as identifying previously learned information from an array of options. Again, common in multiple choice tests where the presence of cues aid in memory retrieval. So when we do our AP Psych MCQs, we're using recognition. We're looking at previously learned information and we're looking at our options and we're trying to decide what is the best option. And that's, that's something we need to practice often, right? Then we're going to talk about context-dependent memory. Context-dependent memory is basically memory enhancement when people are in the same environment where, where they encoded the information. So, for example, the physical locations trigger memories, which can then be useful both in academic settings, like studying in a quiet room, and your personal life, such as remembering past events at a specific location. So, for example, studying in the same room where you're going to take the test can improve your recall. So, you know, when you have a chance to study at school, when you have a chance to go to some teachers, like in our school, we do, like we call them win times, where the, the kids will come and you can ask questions to the teacher and you're studying in that environment or you're listening really well in class, you're taking really good notes. That is really good when you're taking the test in that same environment. Okay. Now we're going to look at mood congruent memory. Okay. Mood congruent memory is the tendency to recall information that is congruent with one's current mood, okay? So basically happening at the same. So for example, if a person is feeling sad, they're more likely to recall other sad events, which can influence the behavior and decision-making that's associated with that. Being happy and better is better at remembering past happy events. So your, your, basically your mood affects what you remember. Okay, we're going to talk about state-dependent memories now. State-dependent memory is memory retrieval is improved when individuals are in the same state of consciousness as when the memory was formed. So, for example, like your physiological states, such as maybe being caffeinated or tired, that could affect your memory retrieval. So, example, information learned under the influence of caffeine may be better recalled when in the same state. Now, I am not recommending this, okay? I'm not recommending you caffeine and you, you've been you you stay up all night studying you've got all this caffeine and then you go to the test and you still got the caffeine because of course we know caffeine also has other effects that are not so good but studying in a quiet room making sure you are hydrated making sure you have a good sleep trying to basically set the same scene so that when you are in the exam you have better recall Okay, we're going to talk about now enhancement techniques. So some en enhancement techniques that we're going to talk about is retrieval practices. So retrieval practice is a learning technique that involves testing oneself on the material rather than just continuously studying it. So like when we do the, the key terms and I'm just, I'm going through the key terms and I just put the word in front of you, you're testing yourself on the on the information without just kind of like basically reading it over and over and over and over again. So you learn it and then you test yourself. Um, this method is known as the testing effect and it enhances memory by forcing the brain to recall information with which strengthens the memory pathways. So additionally, we have metacognition. This is the awareness and understanding of one's own learning, learning processes. 
This plays a crucial role in this technique. So basically reflecting on how we learn, we can adapt the way we study to improve our retention and understanding of the material. Both the strategies help in solidifying information in long-term memory, making it more accessible for future use. So what we're saying here is basically you've got to figure out what kind of learner you are. Are you an auditory learner? Are you a visual learner? Do you learn better by writing notes? This is why when we talk about these key terms, some kids work really well when they're writing out all the flashcards and you're learning in that way. Other kids like to hear them. Other kids like to see them. So you've got to figure out what works best for you so that you can retain as much information as possible. Okay, so that's all I have for 2.6, uh, retrieval, retrieving memories. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you did, please uh, subscribe to my channel, give me a nice like or a comment. I really appreciate it a lot. And um, I'm beginning the video now for the key terms. Okay, have a great evening or, or day or wherever you are. I'll see you next time.